I am personally grateful for the brave and swift response from our officers, because this could have been a very different press conference today, if not for their efforts. With that said, we're still in the very early stages of this investigation, so many comments that we give today should be considered as preliminary, and you need to know that we may not be able to answer all of your questions. Today, we will show you the videos from the body cameras worn by the two officers who fired their weapons in the incident last night. What you will see in these videos is limited because our officers were taking cover as we instruct them to do for their safety, which means, quite frankly, you really won't be able to see much from their videos. However, what these videos do is illustrate the point that I've made many times before, and that is policing is a very dangerous job. What you'll see is how quickly things happen and the split second types of decisions that officers often face. As police officers, we hope that we never have to fire our weapons, but when we're forced to do so, we understand and we accept the high level of public scrutiny that will result from it. The videos we're showing today are just one piece of a thorough and complete investigation. Our investigators will conduct a complete review of the case, which will include a review of all the available video, a review of forensic evidence, interviews with the officers and other witnesses, just to name a few of the things they'll be doing. We owe it to the officers involved, the suspect, the suspect's family, and this entire community to conduct a thorough review of the incident. Only then can we ensure that the use of force is justified and that our policies, procedures, and training were followed. I want to share some information about the involved officers. Officer Patrick Norton was hired in June of 2016 and is assigned to the 8th Division. Officer Alex Dugan was hired in October of 2016 and is assigned to the 1st Division. The two officers were riding in a car together and were working an overtime violent crime detail. Photographs and information from the officers' personnel files will be shared with the media at the conclusion of this briefing. Both of these officers will be on administrative reassignment as the Public Integrity Unit does their investigation. I now want to turn things over to Major Jamie Schwab. Major Schwab commands our Special Investigations Division, which includes the Public Integrity Unit, which is the unit handling this investigation. He'll talk with you about the investigative process and the investigation so far. Major Schwab. Uh, thank you, Chief. Again, I am Major Jamie Schwab. I am the commander of the Special Investigations Division. Uh, I'm going to read a brief timeline of events that occurred last night, uh, after which we'll watch the officer's video, and I'll answer any questions that I can. Uh, as the Chief mentioned, we're in the very early stages of the investigation. Approximately 50 witnesses have been interviewed so far, and we still have numerous interviews to conduct and videos to examine. I'd also like to relay to the public, if anyone has cell phone video or other information from the Kroger last night and they have not spoken to a detective, they can call 574 LMPD and we'll have a detective reach out to them. Uh, so I'll go through a timeline of events. Uh, last night, November 7th, 29, 2019, at approximately 6.05, Metro Safe Communications received a report of a shooter inside the Kroger store located at 520 North 35th Street. The individual reporting the incident advised there was an armed individual inside the location and that multiple gunshots had been fired. As the chief mentioned, officers Alex Dugan and Patrick Norton were patrolling in the area as a two officer unit. They arrived on scene in less than a minute. The officers were in full uniform and operating a marked patrol vehicle. Uh, wearable video recordings, which we'll view, show the officers approaching the store from the south side of the main entrance. At the time of their approach, a witness fleeing the store relayed to the officers a description of the shooter. Within seconds, a male wearing a red hooded sweatshirt and armed with a handgun exited the main entrance of the store and was confronted by the officers. The suspect turned toward the officers and began firing numerous rounds at them. The officers, one armed with a patrol rifle and the other with his duty handgun, returned fire, striking the subject several times. 
Uh, assisting officers arrived at the location and rendered aid to the suspect who was later pronounced deceased. Officers also swept the building to evacuate additional bystanders and search for any additional threats inside the store. Uh, the identified witnesses from the store were then secured on public transportation buses and then they were interviewed individually. Uh, what the witness interviews and store video show is that the suspect drove a Hyundai SUV to the Kroger and parked by the front door. He entered the store and physically assaulted another individual near the meat department. During the assault, the suspect produced a handgun and began firing numerous rounds towards the ceiling of the store. Uh, actually, one of those rounds caused a main water line uh, near the front of the entrance to burst. So on some of the videos, you may notice a lot of water at the front of the store. Uh, the suspect fled the store and was subsequently confronted by our officers, as I've described. Uh, the other party to the physical confrontation was identified, and he was interviewed by public integrity unit uh, investigators. And we are still right now trying to work on what relationship the suspect had with that individual. Uh, so with that said, we can go ahead and we'll watch the video, and then I'll attempt to answer any questions. Mm -hmm. 